Right, so you don't want to see us talk about Thunderbirds or things like that. Go ahead and go to the timestamp below me here. Get right to the meat and potatoes of this episode. Otherwise, keep watching because we're going to talk about Thunderbirds for just a second before we jump into the episode, okay? And also, National Parts Depot. Get your parts there. It's a great place to go for your Thunderbird. They have stuff in stock. I got something here I think you're going to like. Mm. Surprises. It's older than anything else we've ever worked on. Mm. A Pretty. 1956 Thunderbird. Nice. Beautiful Mouth car. Track. I mean, that is just yes. an epically beautiful car. It's like there's three or four cars in my life that I love and just would love to have one up until I drive them. <laughs> this is one of those cars. It's a collection piece. <laughs> it, would, <laughs> it would be one that would sit in the collection yeah. and everybody go, why don't you drive that car? I don't fit that car. You drive it. Tell me why. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you're like me, yeah. and you're kind of tall from the waist up, these cars don't work. Same thing, oddly enough, and I love, I love me a 56 Ford Crown Victoria or regular yep. Victoria. I got to drive Rick Schmidt's Victoria. Mm -hmm. Not again. No. Because when I'm sitting in the car and I need to go look at us, like the look to go see what's coming from over there, I have to do that. <laughs> or I have to do mm -hmm. that. And that's just annoying. Because yes. my eye line is like right above here as yeah. above the window. It just and this I, car is the same thing. I know that struggle. <laughs> you like me, you're really tall. <laughs> these tiny little legs yeah. and big ass yeah. body on it. Um, these cars are horrible for me for seating, but really that, that, not why we why we're here. Because this car is here because it has no brake lights. Definitely something you want on a hefty investment. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of nice to have brake lights. A lot of yeah. people today don't know the yeah. hand signals, you yeah. know, what you're doing with your car. Well, BMW owners don't use them anyway. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's turn signals. It's turn signals, <laughs> hand signals, same yeah. thing. They wouldn't use those either. So what I want to do is I'm going to just basically, I'm going to pull the car a little bit further forward. just going to knock it into neutral and drive it a little bit further forward. We're going to pick it up in the air to get the seats unbolted, seat unbolted. I'm hoping. It frees up about two inches about of space. An <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do that and then we're going to get going. All right. All right, so before we go any further with disassembling stuff, I'm going to go ahead and pull the taillights out and make sure we have good bulbs because the simplest fix is most often the problem in my experience. So just gonna rule this out so we are not wasting time. inspect it. All right, so the filaments are good. Uh, those are a little bit squished, but the contacts are a little bit squished, but perfectly usable. So from the looks of it, the bulb itself is good. All right, so we're just gonna test this with a 12 volt battery, nine volt battery, whatever, with some alligator leads, and we'll see what happens. All right, so I am up here at the brake light switch. On these ones, it is pretty much right on the other side of your driver's side motor mount. Uh, so I've got our multimeter set to continuity slash resistance. Now I'm going to check the switch and you will not be able to see this, but it's a two prong switch. I'm just going across them. If I can fit my fat hands down in here. Right. Okay. So our switch is open, which is pretty normal. Okay. All right, so this is a pressure switch, so I'm going to have somebody jump in the driver's side and pump the brakes. So just put, press it down and hold it. The switch did not change state, so I believe we have a bad switch off the bat, but I'm also going to check our wires here. All right, so these are the wires off of the switch. They are a bullet type connector. This left one, when I pulled it off, uh, just slid right off. So either needs a new connector or need to go back in there and recrimp it a little bit. Don't exactly like crimping these for long term, but it gets you by in a pinch if you can't get the right connector. So I am going to check resistance on these. Start with this left one and go to ground. 
we are getting 0.7 ohms. I would say this is probably the control side or the power side of the circuit. So this will normally probably have 12 volts to it. And then on this side, I'm gonna check ground. And we are getting four ohms, which if you do the math with Ohm's law and all that, would be a two amp circuit, which would be pretty close to what brake lights should be. So I'm willing to bet if we put 12 volts onto this wire, we will get brake lights. And if that's the case, we definitely have a bad switch. So let me get some alligator clips and try it. All right, so I've got a jumper wire hooked up to our wire and I'm just going to pop it onto the positive battery and we have brake lights, ta-da. So that switch is bad, our wiring is good. Uh, as long as when we key it on, we have 12 volts on the other side as well, which I'm sure we will because it, it's a bad switch. That's how it be. So I'm going to let Jeff get in here because there is a little bit of to do with the new switch and he's got to do some explaining. All right, so we're gonna solve a little bit of a problem today. This car really needs a dual reservoir master cylinder. It doesn't have one. Uh, the other problem is that we know now that we have a bad switch and we need to fix the switch. I am not going to fix the original pressure switch that Ford used. The ones that are available now, we've seen a lot of comments in some of the groups on the Thunderbird sites and Falcon and everything, where the newer switches that are being made overseas are actually not working all that well. Now, the nice thing for Thunderbird guys is, is there is a solution to that problem. That solution is this right here. This is the part that we got from National Parts Depot. And you're looking at it thinking, well, what does this do? Initially, I wondered the, <laughs> the same thing. But in actuality, they bolt these two pieces together to keep from wrecking your finish and making it look bad with this piece right here in the box. I'm going to pull these out of the way. Now, this mounts underneath your dash. Let me get these pulled away from here. This mounts underneath your dash on the support for your brake system. This, there's a bolt hole in the front part of the support, and then this actually mounts to the brake pedal assembly itself, to the bolt that holds the actuator plunger on the brake pedal assembly. And what this does is, is basically it is a closed switch. So when that switch is pressed, the lights are off. When that switch is open like that, the lights are on. So your brake pedal is on this side and you're pressing this way. So this, the brake pedal is on or you know up and then you hit the brakes and you push the brake pedal down and it opens it up and the switch operates. The reason I'm going into all this explanation on the tabletop is I'm going to do my best to show you the locations for all of this stuff, the wires you need to plug into, but there is literally almost no room underneath that dash pan and I, I'm going to have to try to get my big fat butt underneath there because I don't have a trained monkey. If I had a trained monkey that knew how to do this stuff, I'd send him in because he could probably just sit on his haunches and do the job. I'm a little bigger than, than a trained monkey. And Jackson doesn't know what he's doing and Logan doesn't know what he's doing. So my other two trained monkeys are not available. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop talking and start working like you guys always say. Oh, I'll need that. All right, right now I've got Cam up front undoing the battery so that we don't burn anything up while we're doing this. We're gonna make all of our connections and then we're gonna send the battery live again. Don't go eat lunch and come back and do this. Just an FYI. All right, so now the hard part begins because we're gonna to have to get up underneath the dash here. Uh, I've already taken the, uh, the headlight switch attachment off so that we can run the female line of the wire over there. I'll show you how that goes back on in just a minute. Um, but for right now, I wanna take this ground wire that they added for the electric wipers that were put on here off. It's done with a flat blade screw and a nut. <laughs> oh my gosh, you gotta be like a contortionist to do this stuff. I don't even know if I can get myself in there. I mean, I'd like to be able to come in this way, but I can't. Anyway, this screw has to come out. Normally, this probably wouldn't be here on a, on a regular Thunderbird that doesn't have electric wipers added to it. Unfortunately for us, or fortunately for Alan, it does have electric wipers. But unfortunately for us, ah, 
I can't get every body, all of my body parts in here <laughs> to, take, to take it out. I think I can probably do it without the screwdriver now. Yeah. All right, so I'll have to find a new home for the ground wire for that, uh, but that shouldn't be too, too hard to do, theoretically. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I don't know why I get myself into this, I'm going to have to get all the way back out of here and go get the parts to bring and put back up underneath here so you can see how that goes in. We love you guys enough that we're doing this. All right, I'm going to get this in here. I'm going to try to get this to bolt into the hole and stay, but I have, <laughs> this is so ticklish. Oh my goodness, trying to get me and it and me and it all up in here. All right, this is a 9 16 bolt that comes with the, the kit itself. You want to make sure that it's not sitting on the actual crossbar underneath here, this part of this uh, chassis on this car. All right. Um, it's a little disconcerting because that bolt is really almost finger tight. I'm hoping that I can take and push this pin in, or the bolt in, in order to access it to be able to put the arm on there that goes on this side of things. I don't think that nut will come off otherwise. It might, but I don't think so. It's going to run into this bracket here first. It's, it's good that it fell off. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it back on there. I got to find the bracket PC thing. Well, this is it. The brake bolt battle of 2022 and I lost. Cam actually finally got the bolt to start by using a long screwdriver on the bolt head on the back to be able to push it into place after he got the bracket installed on the bolt, push the bolt back a little bit, put the nut on and threaded it with these two fingers. His are a little longer than mine. Got stubby little fingers. And he, um, he finally got the thing to go in. This is what it looks like. That's what you're working for right there. And I'm sorry we don't have video of it. We tried shooting that on Saturday. Did not work. Uh, the video is, is fuzzy. It's hard to see. And there's a brace that runs right across it. I'm showing you a picture of where that brace runs underneath the dash. It's right in the way for us to get through that little bitty hole that we were working with on the side with the air conditioning. Had we not air conditioning, we would be fine. So, on for the rest of it. All right, there's not enough room for me to get a camera and me talking about all of this stuff up in there. So what I just did was I went in and set the mechanical switch portion of it. What you want to do is to set the switch up so that it's closed when the brakes are off. When you push the brakes on, you should hear it click. If it doesn't click, when you're pushing the brakes, that means you don't have a good enough connection between the arm and the mounting point on the brake pedal. So what you want to make sure you do is you get that set just right. Now I'm going to go in and start hooking up all the wires where they need to go. Hopefully I can show you a little bit on that. I think it's going to mostly be some B-roll though. All right. So weirdly, the one screw that goes on the headlight switch that I'm showing you right now, that one went right on without a problem and we got both the wires that are supposed to be hooked up there that green wire that i'm showing you goes to the uh, stoplight switch all right now what you want to do is you want to uncork the green wire because the green wire is the one that controls the brake lights and as long as that's correct make sure that wire is where it's supposed to be now it should be between the orange with blue and the white with blue on our <laughs> on ours it was not it was on the other side of it so just make sure that's what you do. You find the green wire. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to try to take these off by grabbing the main casing and not pulling on the wires for the reason is this stuff is 65 years old and <laughs> I've actually pulled the wire out of the, out of the connector like that. So that's why I know not to do that. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to plug, uh, with a plug. Great Lord Almighty. Ah, I'm going to plug the wire in there and then this plugs into the port where the other original wire was plugged in. I can get everything out of the way. Theoretically. Ah. 
and we'll see if we have lights Ugh. theoretically all right, I've had Cam turn the battery back on. I'm going to do a test now. We've got uh, Jackson at the back of the car. Are they working? They are working. Yay! Are they not working? They're not working. Well, they're working, but they're not anyway. That's pretty slick. I like that. All right, well, let me get out of here, Cam. I'm going to close this thing out and talk about what we'd be done done today. If I get out of here, if I do. Out of here. Oh, tools in the floor. I don't remember how I got in here. That's usually the biggest problem. I'm going to have a stroke when we do this kind of stuff. Ugh. That's a long way down. Actually, I have to say that, that went. Yeah, yeah, it was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Actually, the worst part of it all was the bolt system. Yeah. And there's no other way I can see that you could do it the way it has to be done. The biggest problem wasn't even the part. It was actually the factory bolt with it being so close to the yeah. top of that bracket And like you, that. you really have that with all makes and models. It's, yeah, it's, it's never the, really fun fitting both your hands up in there. It's 65 years ago. I mean, yeah. you know, it, compared to what they're doing now with engineering and, and CAD design and all, they're talking about like, you know, stone tablets and <laughs> Slide rules. And stuff. <laughs> Slide rule and an abacus. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's a little, little different. Uh, I like it, though. I mean, I think it's a mm -hmm. much better safety update. Uh, the nice thing is, is it completely negates the wiring for the switch. You yeah. don't have to run the switch. You can just leave it plugged in. And that switch should be a readily available aftermarket as well, rather than a hydraulic switch that you have to find. Exactly. Specific. I mean, you can go get one of those on-off yeah, switches. It looks like it's off of any 2000s era vehicle. I like it. Yeah. That's a good plan. Uh, speaking of a good plan, why don't you go out and check out our Patreon account. Right now, going up beside me are the folks that actually put their money where their mouth is and financially support us on a, on a monthly level. Uh, I'm not saying you need to do that to enjoy the show. You don't. But if we've saved you any money and helped you out at all, it helps us to provide a living wage for Andrew and a little bit of money for the kids who come in here and work on Saturdays with us so that they can kind of go in, you know, and buy, what, a box of popcorn? Not anymore, but <laughs> they can save up for a box of popcorn. <laughs> I'll have to give them a raise just because they, you know, it's Start just like- paying them in ramen, it <laughs> might be worth more. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a gallon of milk. Yeah. Take it home to Go your buy mom. yourself something nice. Black market milk. <laughs> Anyway, so subscribe to the channel also. We are on our march to uh, 100,000 subscribers. A little blank spot up here in the middle with Paul's wall and the white border. Our plaque is supposed to be going right there. So we're asking you to tell your friends, tell your neighbors, go over, you know, McDo Bob McDonald said that he actually goes in at his family's house. <laughs> subscribes on their computer. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Guerrilla marketing at his best. <laughs> So, I'm not recommending you do what Bob McDonald does, but it's not a bad hey, idea. Hey, it's worth it. <laughs> Aunt Martha, looking at her sewing videos, wondering why all of a sudden she subscribed to Auto Rest of It's a clean channel, Aunt Martha. Mm -hmm. It'll be fun. We're worth it. Family worth friendly. It. Family values. Anyway, <laughs> you always help me always go right off it. into that ditch, don't you? Um, do me a favor and be kind to each other, love each other, treat each other nice. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next time on Auto Rest of Mod. Mod. We are now official in here. Mm -hmm. This place around us is all painted thanks to Picasso Jackson. That may be his new nickname. We call him Flathead because when he was littler, his hair was completely uncurly. And now, puberty has struck. <laughs> his hair went boring. I still call him Flathead because it's a Ford thing. <laughs> but anyway, I digress. He painted all of this, and it's really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I am so impressed with that kid. And Logan, I mean, Logan was like, you know, he's moved stuff he does, around. He does stuff. He does whatever, something. Yeah. He does things. Stuff. With stuff. Yeah, stuff. And things. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad he doesn't have it. Yeah. He has <laughs>